We'll go ahead and lay all the way back. So your legs are in and then your head is in as you lay back. The floating Shavasana. I like to start here because it just helps the body relax for a moment. It gives us a chance to really tune in. Let some good deep breaths flow. Inhale. And exhale. So with our Thanksgiving coming up, our intention today is on gratitude. So there will be multiple times through class today where I'm going to just simply say the words, thank you, thank you, thank you, um, because that brings us into that gratitude state. So whenever I come to one of those points, you have a choice. You can either choose a gratitude that you want to carry all throughout class today, or you can just spontaneously think of whatever gratitude comes up in the, those moments when I say, thank you, thank you. Um, but the idea is, for me, it's, I find it really helpful to really, really feel the emotion of gratitude or whatever emotion I'm working on when I picture it. And then when I, as I'm picturing it, I let my body feel like I'm back at that moment. So for instance, if it's like a gratitude for playing with my kiddo in the playground or something like that, just it, it brings me to that moment and how it feels to just breathe the fresh air, you know, see the leaves falling around in the nearby trees and, and get to go down a slide with a kiddo, you know? So whatever it is that's your gratitude, my recommendation, try to bring yourself mentally into that space so that your whole body feels whatever that gratitude is. So again, it can be different ones each time, that's fine. Or you can just carry the same huge one for you all throughout class. But we're going to let our body and our mind be encompassed in that right, that feeling of gratitude. Um, with Dr. Um, Moto's work on water, the crystalline structure of water as it was frozen with the label gratitude froze just in a beautiful snowflake-like pattern compared to others that were labeled hate and, and other negative words that were just kind of an ugly structure when when they looked at the crystals. So since our body is, body is mostly water, I really do feel like letting ourselves take this moment to be in gratitude does take a play a huge positive impact on the health of our body overall. So I think having this Thanksgiving season is healthy for us and it just feels good to come back to that state. So that's the idea that we're playing with today. So with that to get us started, let's begin to stretch our arms all the way to the back wall. Huge inhale. Exhale, lean to one side. And as we're swaying each direction, inhale back to long, exhale to the other side. Let's let ourselves come into that, that first moment of thank you. So leaning to one side, thank you. And to the other side, thank you. Maybe it's as simple as thank you that I, I'm just happy I have this body that works so well. I have this community to practice with. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. After you finish the next one, take the right knee into chest, hug it in. Nice compression for the hip flexor. I also like to roll out the right ankle. Both directions. And stretch the right leg up to sky, hamstring stretch. Grab as high as you can reach on this leg. Make sure you're in the stretch, continuously moving the edge. Stretching it higher or pulling it in closer. Really good deep sensation for the body. And then hook right heel to the back 
left edge of the fabric if you're confused just to get your neighbor hook around the shin to hug the shin in as close as it'll get so we've got a really good hip opener and deep stretches like this i think it's another great opportunity just thank you thank you thank you Nothing in this life is permanent. I think the pandemic showed me a lot of that. So much change happened just so rapidly. Nothing in this life is permanent. The people, the places, the things, they all change. The ideologies. So being grateful for what we have while we have it. So helpful. One more breath for this side. And free out the leg, drop it down. Second knee comes in. Deep hug. Ankle rolls. Stretching the leg up to sky for hamstring. Extending the leg higher, keep pulling it in closer. One more inhale. So hook the heel, slide the shin. Breathing deep and full helps to relax the muscle. And that relaxation, we can sit with the gratitude. Thank you, thank you, thank you. One more breath in. And out. And then drop the leg out, both feet kick free out the front. Grab onto the back of the fabric to help you pull the torso to sit up. Let's go right into an inversion. So hook the thumbs on the fabric that's behind you. By hooking the thumbs, we can help push the fabric down to about where the pant line is. And then lean back, locking the, the fabric in place right there. Once you're leaning back, you can slide the hands back up to the head. Wide legs, flip upside down. So wide legs, like wider than the fabric, so that the feet can wrap around. Mm -hmm. Good. Good one. Yeah. See if you can push the fabric even further down, because it's kind of staying at your waist. So push it down and kind of lean into it to make it stick on your hips. Good. Yep. And wide legs, wrap the ankles up. <laughs> it takes some tries. You're good. Any variations that feel good once you're there. So if you just want to hang, great. If you want to twist, if you want to arch the back, anything that just feels helpful. Yeah, I'm just going to stop here. 
And you can lift your knees for a moment. Let's see if we can even see the down your thighs. Any more space. All right, so we're just But yep, yeah, just like that. Okay. And as you kind of pull it right here, start to lean back in. I'll hold you so you don't want to do it. It's right there. Now start to slide it down your leg. Okay, now, now continue to tilt further back. Wide legs. Hold on to that. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, it's like hurting right here. The, the, okay. the digging. So the massage, that's that's some fascia. Okay. So that the, the fabric does massage fascia. So okay. if it's too intense, don't worry about it. There will be other stuff that you can try just as we go through. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's the fascia massage. That's It's definitely there for some of the big groups like hamstring and yeah. things like that. So yeah, no worries about it. It gets better and better as you come back, basically. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so even if you kind of lean back like that, so your fascia gets a little bit used to some of the pressure, it, like it's like using a roller, just enough that it's kind of helping it to start working on that. Tightness, but yeah. not. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of things like that that it just, just coming back, your body yeah. gets used to it. Yeah. Same with inverting. Not not everybody's used to actually being upside down for a lot. So, <laughs> so it just takes a little while to get used to. And, and then it almost becomes addictive. You're like, I have to hang upside down now. <laughs> yeah, just kind of keep playing with it as you want. And sometimes there's slightly different spots that feel better for people. So maybe slightly higher on the waist, you can try. Yeah, just kind of play with what works for your body. And if you are out before others, you're satisfied. Let yourself do some just nice neck stretches. So you can just sit here, hook the elbows, lean forward, and just kind of roll the head a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. Just ease any of that tightness out that's willing to work its way out right now. Okay, so sitting up tall, let's take a twist to bunch up the fabric front door half. Your right shoulder a bit closer to the back wall. Let that right shoulder and the right arm pull backwards or circle around the fabric behind you. Good, release. Second side, bunch of the fabric to the other half. Again, it's always the shoulder that's closer to the back wall. That's the one that opens or circles around that. Yeah, I think you got it, you got it. <laughs> this doesn't feel quite right. <laughs> Okay, so we're now trying to face the center of the room. So this half, you can just stay where you were. You two go ahead and switch the bike that you're gripping onto again. Good. So bunch it up. Lock your arms straight. And then by locking it straight, it gives the hip a little bit of space. So we're trying to get that leg over so that we can straddle wide. All face the center. Don't worry, it takes everybody a couple of times trying the first time. So it's okay if it takes a little while. But from, once you do get there, eventually get your feet in. And this is a good place where it's really helpful to note if you did end up in the center or not. It helps you know, okay, I need to grab more fabric or less fabric to get myself more centered. But if you're not anywhere close to the center, you get your feet in the right spot. 
And then you grip up high, lift your hips up for a moment, and then re-straighten the legs, and that'll get you there. Sometimes it's helpful just to do that so that you can sit even taller as well. So once you're here, wide legs, both feet are in, the arms press open, let your inner thighs stretch. Slide the right hand down the right leg, the left hand goes up and over on the right side. And rise, second side, slide down the left leg, right hand up and over. Make sure your opposite leg isn't just kind of flopping in, try to keep it active wide. Beautiful, torso rises back up. We're going to attempt to stand inside, so make sure toes are completely inside on both sides, so cover toes if they're not covered. So the feet are again in the right spot. Once you're there, slide the heels in close, and your knees are popping out of the fabric. The heels are in as close as you can, knees are popping out of the fabric. Grip up high on the fabric in front of you. Good. And then we're coming to a toe squat. So with the knees popping out of the fabric, we're sliding the toes underneath the body. Yeah, so grip even higher. Yeah. You got it. You got it. And kind of free out your head so that you're even more over your toes. Okay. From the toe squat, all you have to do is grip even higher. Keep the inner thighs a little bit engaged as you slide all the way to standing. The inner thigh engagement makes it so you're not just like, Whoa, like you're, you can actually squeeze and stand. Good, you got it. So we're going to face for the mirror. So the shoulder that's closer to mirror comes behind, and then you grab the, the other side. Good. You're trying to face your hips to the mirror, and then you're sinking down into split. So this grip is good for your armpits being able to hold you up, so it's less about arm strength. If you do want to go deeper in the split, so you would change to the grip being on the inside, and then you can go kind of as low as you want to go. So, so cool. Personal preference. I know. Good. 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 Okay. What we're going to do to transition out from here is drop onto your back knee. Your front leg is still extended in front of you. You're kneeling on your back knee now. Good. So from here, shimmy your hips backwards. There's kind of a spot where it gets stuck. So shimmy it backwards past that stuck spot and then sit on your back foot. I can't even do that. I'll just say. <laughs> yeah, if it's too much, just stay kneeling on that knee. But your front leg is extending straight. And then what you're doing is sliding your hands forward so that you're in a, a really good stretch for that front hamstring. Try to bring your arms inside, and I just want to see if you can, yeah, if that helps at all. I know, it does change the balance. <laughs> Good. Yeah, that looks great. That's okay, that's okay. Okay, from here we're going to a hip stretch. So the front leg bends in the way that it's like crisscross with more of a knee stack. Good. So it's almost like a pigeon pose bend. Once you're there, you're going to try to hug around the fabric, grab onto your wrists, and then lean forward. So that wrist grab, make sure that you won't fall out. And we're actually hitting their neck, so so we're going to go to pigeon pose. So you're, you just enjoy your, your pigeon pose. <laughs> okay. Are you telling me? Yeah. 
Oh, we're going, I'm we're going there next. Yeah, we're going there next. Yeah, you just enjoy it. I think the tangles too. That's okay. <laughs> so free out your arms, your one, your shoulder that's back, kind of bring it forward. Like all the way through the front. Yeah, and then hug. Oh, that's okay. You're actually in pigeon pose, so you'll, you'll just stay there for a minute. <laughs> okay. So now the rest of us that have the hug, release the hands, torso comes back in. Grab onto these two front ends, lift the hips up, and then continue to slide forward into pigeon pose. Oh, I'm already in. Yep, you're already in pigeon pose, yep. If your back knee is super bent and you want to extend it more straight behind you, just kind of pick up and readjust your hips. But it's okay to just be bent behind you, whatever allows hips to open up really nice. Sometimes, if, so if you keep the shoulders locked in, that's more of a back bend, so that can be nice. If you free out the shoulder that's over the toes, then you can slide forward and the other end of the fabric is like a little seat belt for a little massage on the shoulder. So up to the you can play with any of it. It's another deep stretch. So a beautiful opportunity to go back and do the thank you. Thank you. So we're going to come out into that wide V sit, so torso up, rock the weight onto your front hip, and then swivel the back knee open so that your legs can go wide again. Beautiful. Arms press open. So beautiful to get to go so deep in the body. Okay, so we're going to start playing with the second side. Make sure the toes are all the way in. We're going to prepare for the toe squat. So the heels need to slide close. The knees pop out. Bunch up the fabric in front of you and start to slide the feet under your body as the, nose pop, the knees pop out. Good. Your pie, yeah, you got it. Yep. And then grip even higher and stand. Good. Now we need to face toward the back wall. So the shoulder close to the outside comes behind. You start to square your shoulder to the back wall, your hips square to the back wall, and then you open the legs into the splits. Remember, if you get nervous about how deep you can go, just all you have to do to get out of it is squeeze inner thighs together. So there's no worry about going too far. It's, it's all within your control. You just squeeze inner thighs to come out of any fear. Readjust the grip if you are wanting the really deep splits, your choice. And we'll drop onto the back knee. Good. So the hands stay on the inside. If they're still behind, bring them on the inside. You slide your hands forward to the toes. If you stay with the hips over the knee, that's more of like a like a half split. Or if you're scooting the hips backwards to sit on the back toes, that's more of a, a piston hamstring stretch. Either way, we're leaning forward. Beautiful stretch for all those really long muscle groups. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And start to lift the torso up for a moment so you can bend the front knee, swivel it in like crisscross fashion. And the arms circle forward to go all the way around back. Grab your wrist so you can't fall out and lean forward. How face.
Okay, torso up. Grab onto the two front ends of the fabric to this direction. Lift the hips up and continue to scoot your way forward into pigeon. Option to maybe free out one of your arms as you lean forward. Just go with the spot that works for you. Let yourself have some really good deep breaths to help these muscle groups really deeply, and beautifully relax. Okay, rock your weight onto the front hip and swivel the other leg around. Come into the bottoms of feet touching together for the cocoon. Here we're going to do a mudra from inside. So try to listen the best you can with what to do with the hands. You cross your arms at the wrists and then with the backs of the hands touching, you're wrapping your pinky fingers around each other. You skip your ring fingers. You wrap your middle fingers around each other. You wrap your pinky fingers around each other. Or sorry, pointers. So pinkies, middle, and pointers are all wrapped around to each other. And then your free thumb and ring fingers are touching their own side. So that way they make two circles. So circle with the right thumb and right ring finger, circle with left thumb and left ring finger. So this is the fearless heart mudra. It's very heart opening for us to live in gratitude, to recognize that impermanence and that for this moment, I do have beautiful things. And it's my heart that makes me feel this connection and this joy that I have with the people around me, with the beauty of nature. Just a couple of beautiful breaths with this fierce heart mudra. Just living in gratitude. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, release the fingers. We'll try to bring both feet up onto the fabric that's in front of our face. So swivel the feet open. Place your hand on that fabric in front of your face to help save the spot. And then the opposite foot as your hand comes up first. Once you've got one foot up, it's easy to get the other foot up in front of you. And then just start to extend the legs upward. Beautiful movement into hamstrings. One foot comes up and then the other, and then extend them up. We're folding in like a little taco. And stay here or head into cobblers. Bottoms of feet are together, knees are open. That's because the fabric itself is what's helping to hug us in.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So as we start to free the feet forward to mirror side, we're going to start preparing for vampire already. So legs can just stay in the fabric. Start to kind of shimmy your back long like a shavasana. That's fine. <laughs> you can pay by the way. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Okay. Okay. So you're laying back long. You want just one thin layer of fabric on the shoulders. So if you have a lot, when the head gets out of the fabric, if you have a lot of fabric on the shoulders, you need to scoot some of that to your feet. You do that by stepping in and then extending the legs out. If you know Vampire very well, by the way, go ahead and just head right into it. So you're scooting all that excess down. So you've got just one good thin layer to completely cover shoulders. Good. And then you reach up high left and right. The fabric is kind of bunched up with your hands a little bit. So then lift the feet up. I get up really high. Good. So the feet are on the inside, pushing out into the socket your hands should gathered up. And by pushing into that gathered up fabric, you're able to rise up. Sometimes it's nice to have a spotter the first time just to help you have confidence. So I'll come by. You look great. And if it, when you get upside down, gets a little uncomfortable on the neck, you can sweep even more out of it. Good. You need to do one more time. Awesome. Okay, so grip up high, high to the leader. Oh, yeah, just lost my balance. Woo! <laughs> you got it. Okay, keep going. Neat stuff. Right there, yep, and turn it up just like you are. And then, like, pushing into the pattern, you're able to lift the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Think of sliding up, you're not looking your feet right there, slide up. And it does take core, so, so <laughs> even just even just build up little inches at a time, nothing wrong with that. Just like I'm already saying, oh, play with variations that feel good for the body. That's it's absolutely good. wonderful. It's <laughs> like the is that you're trying to stay like looking up. There you go. That looks amazing. You, go. you got it. And then it's going to come out just slowly slide back. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> Good. Same as before, stay upside down as long as it's nice. If you're out and you've been out for a while, you've had time for your blood pressure to flip back around, eventually you'll set up to help me know how you're doing, but no sense of rush. It takes different amounts of time. And if we are rushing our way up to standing, I wouldn't want to, you know, risk fainting or anything like that. We just give our, our heart, our blood pressure, all the time it needs to flip back. It's very different to be upside down with the demands of the oxygen to get to the brain 
versus normal where it has to do with most of its work to get up. So there's a lot of things that have to kind of shift around a bit. Okay. Looks like we're doing decent. If you need another couple of breaths, take it. When you're ready to come out to stand, we'll do some standing poses. So you just grab onto the fabric. I like to lift the toes up briefly and then tilt out. That kind of gives that momentum. If you have the hands on the outside, it helps to make it so you won't fall, just kind of trip yourself at all. Yes, the hands behind. And grab. <laughs> Little sips of water, good. And lift up. Yep, yeah, that's it. You got your mouth on too. Okay, let's take the fabric out in front of us. And just bending forward at the waist when you get there. Good time sipping water. Hydration is important, especially when we're doing upside down step. But as we're here, your choice if you want to sway at all or if you're just trying to flatten the spine as much as possible. Do what feels good. Beautiful, soft bend to the knees. Let's roll up. And let's take some of our, our stretches with the leg all the way covered inside. So on this back end, you're finding the end of the fabric. Kind of like how at the beginning of class we waved it out. You're doing that same thing. So nothing stumbled over. Take right leg inside. Whole leg is covered. Once you get there, dive both arms inside. Make sure you're not too far behind the plumb line. Your head is like an inch behind. So you're scooting clear up to it, but then both arms inside. As you lean forward, push the elbows into the fabric. That lifts the leg up a little bit and it leads your torso closer to the, the thigh. It's really helpful for that hamstring. If you also want to sink your weight forward like slits, you can also have that liberty if you want, but don't feel any pressure to. And torso rises up. Leave the left arm inside. Right arm circles up and back. It's nice spinal twist. If the left arm even pushes this right leg to the left, the leg is traveling leftward, it gets you into the IT band of that right. Beautiful, the arm returns and we're locating the left half of the fabric. So on the left half, you're getting this long edge that's close to you. Slide the right hand up that long edge, the left hand at the heart, and you're standing toes to left. And then start to bend at the weights, leaning forward. You're welcome to just take it halfway down. Maybe left hand drops to floor. Maybe you sink your weight to mirror and hop your hand forward to mirror. So it's going again just as deep as you want to take it. Both hands could travel to the floor if you took all the other steps already. Okay, if right hand on the floor, reach it high. Take your weight over standing leg. Your knee is like a spring, it bends for a moment, and then as you Straighten it, you pop your torso all the way up. Face forward, grab onto each side. Cover up to glute. Bend the front knee. Toes swivel in, good. Dive both arms forward. Beautiful. And we're going into a quadricep stretch. So the left hand scoops at the left knee and then slides to the foot. Yeah, kind of start at the knee and then try to slide back. That's okay. 
You could just stay with a toe stretch here as well. Just kind of rock forward so you're stretching the toes. If you're in the quad stretch and you're not quite feeling as much stretch as you want, pull the knee further backwards. Yeah, grabbing fabric works too. Totally fine. <laughs> okay. And then option four, lotus. That foot that's behind you, you swivel it forward and stack it on top. Now, if your knees won't do quite a stack, you can also just hold it low. So that's an option. Stacking is fine. Um, if the friction is letting it stay enough that you could bring hands to heart, that's fine, but you don't have to. Holding on is absolutely okay. So the hips relax open. And drop that foot back down and back, as far back of an angle as you can get. Start to slide the fabric off the glute down toward the knee. That helps the hips move lower and lower into a really good pigeon. We want to be careful coming to the second side that we don't fall out of balance. So first, hop your foot right underneath you. Carefully free out shoulders. And carefully get the leg out. Use the fabric as much as you need for that balance hold. Whenever you're there, wave it free. Take left leg inside. We're not too far behind plumb line. We're almost underneath it. And then walk forward, so hop forward, and then elbows inside, elbows push open, lean the heart forward. Maybe also sink like a splits forward. Weight over standing leg, torso up. So the right arm stays inside and pushes so that the leg travels a bit to the right. And then left arm circles up and back to the, to the wall behind you. Forward. The arm returns. We're locating the right half of the fabric, this line that's closest to us. Left hand is high, right hand is at the heart, turn your right toes to the right. Put to bend at the waist. Maybe pause halfway down. Maybe drop right hand to floor. Maybe sink toward mirror. If you did all of that and you want left hand down too, that's Left hand reaches high. Take your weight over standing leg. Bend it like a spring. Pop up. Face forward. Swivel the knee open. Cover up to glute. Once you've done all that, dive the shoulders through the center. Hair position hands makes it so that if your shoulders and elbows are locking you forward, you can't fall out. So either toe stretch or quad stretch. Grabbing for right foot. Pull the knee back until you can feel the quads.
Beautiful. Lotus, if you'd like. So low grip is fine. Stacking is fine. And that the heart is fine. Just do whatever feels good to let the hips have a chance to open. Pigeon pose, this leg drops back down and to a back angle. And start to slide the fabric down for the knee so that the hips can lower even closer to the ground. Hop underneath you, use care as you safely get out. Let's take a last inversion. Um, I'll guide people through a hip hang if you want to join with me on the hip hang, but you, you're allowed to do any inversions that you know safely. So straddle back is fine. The butterfly with your knee open behind, that's fine. The shoulder one, uh, any of these are fine. Um, but if you want to join me for hip hang, then, then that'll be the guided one. So you're taking your fabric across the hip bones. I even come to tippy toes a lot of times so that I don't get in the guts. That makes it much more uncomfortable. So walk forward to take all the slack out of the fabric. Start to bend at the waist. And then when it feels secure, you loosen the thumbs up, drop to the floor, and start to walk back so that you're under. But down dog is fine if that pressure is pretty intense on hips. Otherwise, Looking toes, having the knees is fine, or any other variations here. Same thing as before, since your head is below the heart, you don't have to stay super long if your body's resisting it or showing you any signs of dizziness or anything like that. Stay as long as you want. We've got plenty of time here. If you're out before others, you're welcome to come to stargazing and then even the chair in a few, in another minute or so. But no rush. This is one of the last inversions of class, so literally just enjoy it as much as you want. I've been working on that one for a while. <laughs> I have to get the other side. <laughs> no! <laughs> yeah. You did do a cool thing, yeah. <laughs> it's one rose marriage. Yeah. Oh my god, is it like a yeah. Superman? Oh, Whoa. 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 <laughs> the last part's still a little ugly, but I thought <laughs> that was great. <laughs> what is that called? It's just like a oh, transition. Like, yeah. Oh, I feel. <laughs> so your 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 hand is like oh, we want to be facing this way. It's opposite arm. So it's this one out front. And then your left leg is going to come up and wrap. Yeah. And then you pull yourself up. Right? Yes. And then you can like stand, turn it into a pound change. Set. Yeah, there's all types of goodies. But I feel like that's what Rosemary's really good at is those transition charts. 
Ya. I love Emily's like quiet nature too. She's like, okay, I'm done. I'm panting just watching you, so don't feel bad. <laughs> You're doing it. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. Right. That one. <laughs> I, I, I've been wrestling with it for a while. That's what I understand. So feel free if your spine needs just a little bit more decompression, take the chair. Otherwise, at any point, you're welcome to come to Shavasana. Yeah. Oh. If at any point you want to come back inside, you can wave it out. Yeah, yeah the Shavasana, I know. Think yeah. about how I survived. Yeah, you did it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Awesome. self paced when you get in there. I'm going to head to the side, the other side, so your head will be. Do you have a class right after this? You got like a 15 minute break. Oh, okay, great. Just a picture. So zero rush. Take all the time so your hips have plenty of time, your head, like no rush. You can head to Chavasana at any point that you're ready. Even if you know to, to just lay on the floor today, if your head, if you don't want to swing at all or anything, that's fine. Um, but you have an option since I taught you that mudra, the mudra, the fearless heart. If you want to do that for a little while on Chavasana, that's fine. So it's your wrist cross, your pinkies, middle pointers, wrap. And then your ring and thumb creates a, a circle. So option if you want to do that, just to be in gratitude. So many beautiful muscle groups having opened a bit today. Even just a little bit of playfulness here and there. It's a beautiful opportunity to be alive, be breathing. So many gifts. There was a quote that I was reading that it's like so many people are, you know, thinking that they need a, this huge house, they need to get a better house or something. And, but your house is like the dream of a homeless person. Your job is a dream of a person that's unemployed. And, and just going through list by list, all these things that it's like, Everything that you have is probably the dream of somebody else. So being so grateful that we do have, that there's no need to compare to the Joneses, so that, that we do have sufficient. We have so, so much beauty, so much friendship. The capacity for compassion. We're not living in a war zone. But this earth has so much abundance to share with us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We'll just be enjoying this sense of gratitude for the next couple of minutes in Shavasana.
beginning to deepen the inhales, the exhales. Introducing movement back to the body, maybe stretching the arms to the back wall, wiggling shoulders left and right like how we began earlier. Or maybe taking a fetal position, keep the legs long, but roll one hip to stack on top of the other hip, up to the side. So by doing that, you can curl into a tight ball, and punch back, just undulating the spine to help wake it up. Maybe three or four times to one side, three or four to the other side. Returning from that beautiful nether world of Shavasana, back to this present moment. Our breath. Our return focus of attention. Eventually we'll get to the spot where our body is ready to set back up. So when you get to that point, kick your legs free, sit all the way up comfortably. With our hands in our heart, we choose fearless heart. We choose gratitude. We choose to look around all that's around us, all this abundance, this dream life. We say thank you. Thank you. So this to lead us on to this marvelous week. Let's wrap up the time we got to share together today with the sound of oh deep inhale now. Oh. May we be filled with light and happiness and peace. Namaste.